Hello lovely people, welcome to another episode of Book Chat, the regular... Blah, blah, blah. Never remember what the wording is. <laughs> For years. Welcome to Book Chat, the weekly wrap up of stuff I've read at some point in my past. I have three books to talk about this week. I'm gonna start with uh, Queenie by Candice Carty Williams. I read this on my Kindle and I actually loved it. <laughs> so Queenie was billed to me as like uh, the new Bridget Jones and I think that description does it a massive disservice because Queenie is tackling a lot of really heavy topics. Um, it's following Queenie who um, her and her partner Tom who have been together a couple of years now are going on a break. Um, she has to move out. Um, she is having some um, difficulties with her job and essentially like we follow this book as like Queenie essentially engages with some really like self-destructive behaviours and we sort of watch her as she sort of falls down this spiral of difficulty and then begins to like pick herself back up and like piece herself back together again. So I think I can I can kind of see the way in which people have gone and built this like Bridget Jones because like um, she works in newspapers and um, she's sort of like it's frank about like sex and stuff like this but actually like is there not, no they're not alike please don't go into this thinking that it's gonna be like that because I think that gives like the I think that's just like a really bad marketing tool to try and get people to read this when actually people should be reading this because it's just a really good book <laughs> so um, that, that said I did struggle with Queenie initially and that's not because it is anyway a bad book it's because the first portion of this book does focus on Queenie engaging in some self-destructive behaviours, um, one of those being um, her sexual relationships with men and the ways in which um, those are quite dehumanising towards her and um, quite brutal to be honest with you, like reading the sex scenes was something that I found quite hard. Um, that's again not because they are badly written but because it is dealing with those sorts of like hard topics that don't make you feel very good to read about but like is a valid thing to be looking at and discussing. Um, I definitely felt like such a sense of catharsis as this book went on and as um, Queenie is able to like seek help and that sort of stuff and also um, try and overcome that stigma that is around seeking help. Health? Help? I mean help for your health I guess. Words. Another thing about this is you get to see the different ways in which Queenie experiences racism throughout the book. So there are like um, things that are really explicit and overt and then there are the ones that are more insidious and so people who might be siding with her about the explicit and overt racism that she experiences then turn around and do like passive aggressive racism and like this, this type of racism which really like is insidious because it's one which if you call people out on they get very funny because like oh but they didn't mean it that way and blah blah blah, blah. You know, obviously I am a white person so um, these are not like lived experiences that I have but I thought it did a really um, I thought it really effectively showed the way in which like you can get complacent as a white person and view yourself as being like one of the good ones but you still have all of these like microaggressions and things that um, you have never questioned that are actually very damaging and that sort of thing. So I also like appreciated that. I think I just <laughs> read this and like I kind of struggled through the first 40% of it because it is a character engaging in, in self-destructive behaviour for completely understandable reasons and then as you go on you really explore Queenie's trauma further and you really get an understanding of why she's been acting the way that she is. Um, so around the 40% mark is when I like felt like I really like got way too attached to be honest with you I was having a bit of a time and I just sort of I read like the last 60% of the book in one day because I was just so invested in this like emotional journey that she's going through um I also really liked the relationship she has with her friends portions of this book are from this group chat that she makes with her friends to like ask them advice with her boy troubles and stuff like this but those portions that were like her friends talking and stuff they felt like so like authentic and real and like how friends in group chats interact and that sort of stuff and I kind of they felt like a little moment of levity in between some of these like a bit harder hitting things there are like characters who I felt like didn't really get like quite as much of a comeuppance as they should have but then that's like real life not books you know I don't know I just had a really good time reading it and I really enjoyed it just to change genres completely, next up we have a fantasy book. This is The Shadow Isle by Catherine Kerr, 
book six of the Dragon Maid. As I mentioned in previous book chats, I've been working my way through the series. I did take a small break between the last book and picking this one up again, but I'm now back on it. This is a series inspired by Celtic mythology, whereby there are past lives that tie into current lives, and there's lots of little different plot lines and time frames and stuff like that. I'm having a fun time with it. I will say that this sort of latter arc, I still feel like I'm in the point where I'm like, where are we going? I don't know. This is a series which sometimes I feel really gripped by, and other times I feel like the pacing is such that I'm just like, I'm sure you're setting stuff up, but like, when are we going to get to the stuff, you know? So this I did enjoy. It's a perfectly fun fantasy book. At times I did question, like, this is the penultimate book, there is one book after this, and then this is done. And I was sometimes like, where is the drive? Where is this, like, we're building to a final showdown thing? Um, there were some new characters introduced to this, which um, initially, like, like, these two are two sisters who are introduced, and um, they're quite squabbly and stuff like that at the beginning. I think by this time, where we're at towards the end of the book, I'm more invested in these new characters, but I do just find myself wondering how we're all going to tie it up with one more book left in a way that's going to be satisfying. I don't know. We'll have to see. It is a journey I have enjoyed. It's just a journey that has not always been consistently as gripping throughout. Um, the final book that I read that I want to talk about is some non-fiction. This is Long Walk to Freedom, Autobiography of Nelson Mandela. Um, this was a bit of a chonker, but actually was not as intimidating a read as I thought based on the size, because um, the chapters of this are super short. It's really easy to be like, oh, I'll just read a quick chapter, because sometimes the chapters are like three pages. Sometimes they are much longer. Um, I've previously read um, No Easy Walk to Freedom, which is um, some speeches and um, like official ANC documents and stuff from Nelson Mandela. So um, it was really interesting to sort of get the wider view on those because those were like speeches given in particular rallies or moments or like in the courtroom at their trial and stuff like that. Whereas this really takes me through like from the start of his life to this contemporary point when he's in his 70s and writing it. It was much more accessible than I thought going into this little trunker because it's, it's, to be honest with you as well, it's quite large font, it's quite spaced. So um, I was just like pleased by the fact that it was just a little bit easier to like settle into than I had maybe expected. It is very thorough. There are definitely things which he does not address and that he sort of leaves out and that sort of thing, but he is dealing with so much in this. Um, I found it really interesting to learn more about his upbringing because that's not something that I really knew a lot about. Um, and then also I have recently read um, a couple of different books that deal with people who are sort of like political prisoners and stuff like that, um, specifically off the top of my head, like um, Life and Death in Shanghai by Niang Cheng, um, which was an interesting, not like, like an interesting comparative point based on like, um, if you are in prison and a lot of the time if you're in like solitary confinement and stuff like this, how do you how do you get through that? And also, how do you still try and keep an eye on what is happening in the wider world? How do you try and draw information from what's going on and stuff like that? Um, but yes, this was just, I mean, like Nelson Mandela's life, like, is so interesting. He achieved so much. Um, it was really interesting getting a better understanding of the different, like, factions within the ANC and other organisations, um, that sort of thing. And, like, just Nelson Mandela, like... It was a good book. But yes, that's everything that I wanted to talk about this week. As per usual, I would love to know if you've read any of these, what your thoughts were, that sort of thing. Um, otherwise, I will see you next time for something different, and I hope you have the loveliest of weeks.